toxic men must stick together. And that is why chief toxic man of Love is Blind season six, Jeremy, is defending his fellow um, loser is defending his fellow manipulator, Trevor. So Jeremy shared a photo of the Love is Blind reunion couch featuring he and Sarah Ann, Jessica and Trevor. And so his caption says, and I quote, we know you asked to leave, you can leave now. Correct. When he came on stage, he was clearly shook. Also, before the texts were shown, he said he was not mentally able to handle it at the moment. Instead of letting him go, he had to sit through it, except that whole part is missing. Mental health is a real thing, people. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm calling BS on this. First of all, Trevor didn't even have to show up to the reunion. He chose to show up. Matthew was another psycho who could have come to the reunion, but guess what? He decided that it was best to stay at home because there is no explanation for his bizarre behavior. Trevor thought that he could out manipulate everybody the way he manipulated his ex and perhaps even Chelsea, but it just didn't work. He was sitting there looking stupid. So when men like Jeremy talk about mental health is a real thing, first of all, what does that even mean? We all know mental health is a real thing, just like we know um, gravity is a real thing. It doesn't mean anything. Um, but it's just rich coming from a man like Jeremy, who, for example, has a long history of mistreating women. We even saw him mistreat a woman on the show, lie to her, manipulate her, gaslight her to try to turn the audience against her so the fact that a man like that can sit up there and try to lecture us on mental health sorry but f off go kick what what did, what did lauren tell him go kick rocks with open toe shoes because you're a pos jeremy you truly are this is somebody like i normally like i'll have people i dislike whatever but i literally hate jeremy and i'm not even gonna hide that like he is a terrible 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 candidate on the show and i think he's a terrible person in real life and i hate that he's always trying to lecture people like we don't know that he's um, he's a fundamentally bad person, right? So let's get into the rest. Trevor, is mental health real to Trevor when he decided to pull that stunt, when he decided to play with that married woman and tell her that he was just coming on the show to do publicity um, and that he wasn't going to actually marry anybody. He was like manipulating her so that he can have his chance at fame. Was mental health real to Trevor when he played in Chelsea's face and with her emotions and tried to get her to um, get engaged to him, accept his proposal, not once, but twice. You know, he came groveling back, trying to get her to change her mind for what? For fame? So that she could just be left heartbroken there? Was mental health real to Trevor then? I'm sorry, Trevor deserved every bit of what he got and more. Um, and Trevor did ask to leave and Nick and Vanessa did tell him that he could leave. But guess what he decided to do? Sit there and continue yapping and looking stupid. So no, I am not gonna feel bad for him at all. And I don't care that he was trembling and he was scared to come on um, stage. It's not because he felt bad about anything he did. It's because he knew he would look stupid. He knew he got exposed and that's it. It's all self-serving. Anyway, Jeremy decided to then go ahead and do some kind of rant on his Instagram. But listen, like I told you guys, I hate everything about this man. So I haven't even like really looked at the thing myself. I'm actually setting up the screen share so that you guys uh, can watch it with me to see what it's all about. Literally just every, like his eyes, his face, everything just repulses me. And I feel like everything that comes out of this man's lie, mouth is a straight up lie. So that's why I didn't even bother watching it before. Let's watch it together and see what this fool has to say to try to defend his sleazy actions, to try to defend Trevor's sleazy actions. Let's go, you guys. And here we are. So first thing I'm going to start off with is I am sorry to Laura specifically about how things happened on, on this show. Um, I'm not sorry about the final outcome. I think that's where it needed to be, but things absolutely could have and should have been handled differently. And for, for that, I am sorry. Um, there's no playbook for it. There's no way to, really know how to handle a lot of this stuff as it's going on but um i am sorry for that and we don't speak but i guess this is all i can do at that point is just publicly acknowledge that um but yeah we'll talk about a little bit more in these these next few clips so this is by far the most hot button topic that we're going to talk about here and it's the whole staying out till 5 a.m thing I want to be very clear. Nobody cheated that night. I'll give you the whole story. It's probably going to be a couple of clips because these are only a minute long, but here's what happened in depth. Um, 
left the house around 10 45 went to go meet with other castmates was originally going to a karaoke bar right before was i was getting there the location switched up to lost and found okay great that's fine about a minute before i get there i find out sarah's there i do initially think like i'm probably going to turn around but at the same time i was like you know what this conversation is going to happen at some point there's other people there whatever we'll, we'll go ahead and have the conversation and uh you know just let it be from there so when i get there i meet up with all the guys um sarah ended up being there there was another girl from the show there as well and you know everything was fine sarah did approach me at one point pretty aggravated and i can understand why um but you know after a little bit we ended up talking and you know we, we were able to squash you know the stuff that happened in the pods and, and that was that it was done she does fill me in on something else though and this is what spurred the really late conversation that happened because I, I was not comfortable with a lot of what was about to happen um she asked me she's like hey so are you ready for this this lake day thing i don't know anything about what she's talking about i knew something was coming up but I was never filled in by production on what was coming. So this is my first time hearing about this. And it's like 1.30 in the morning at this point. So she fills me in on what's going on with this Lake Day thing. And I guess we're going to be meeting on camera for the first time. And obviously, we both know it's going to cause problems. So Sarah had already been a point of contention in my relationship with Laura. And I mean, even that same day, we had met with her parents and Sarah somehow came up in that conversation. And I was like, you know what? There's been enough that's been aired out to the world at this point. I'm not going to have this happen and it just go to complete shit. Hindsight's 2020 on this, obviously. But we're, we're going to squash this now. So we did hang back and we went through all of the scenarios that were going to happen with this and how things can be approached and how things can be done and all these other things. This never happened at her at her you know apartment this did happen <clears throat> excuse me in that parking lot slash alley wherever the hell i had parked over at lost and found like that's that's all that happened so we finished talking about all the stuff that can go sideways correctly whatever else at this point at no point in this conversation were sarah and i talking about us being together or anything like that and i even openly acknowledged like i know i'm going to catch so much hell for this when i get back to the house like i knew that so after we get done talking, I asked her, hey, how far away do you live? I'm not going to leave you in the parking lot. You know, I'll drop you off, whatever. She lived like eight minutes away. So yeah, I did go and drop her off. I never went into her place. I never, nothing ever happened with that. Um, I saw an interesting theory, though, that if I wanted to prove that I hadn't done anything and my Apple Watch, you know, had caught me, um, that... I should post my heart rate and all that stuff from my Apple watch. And then I let, then, you know, I left my phone in the car. There, there's all these theories out there. I actually looked it up today because I found what date that was. My Apple watch had actually died before we ever even went out. It died at like 945, something like that. So no, I wasn't caught by my Apple watch. And yes, I did share my location because I wasn't trying to hide anything at that point. Um, drop her off. I go back to the apartment. Laura had specifically said, Hey, if you're going to be out late. You know try not to wake me up so i'm like all right cool i get back i go and lay on the couch about 7 a.m rolls around i hear her rustling around upstairs i go upstairs tell her what happened it obviously does not go well again i tried approaching this with good intent of like hey things are hashed out here's what's coming up let's you know let, let's move on from this type of thing uh what i did not take into account is her feelings towards that and how it looked and everything else i knew like i said i knew i was going to catch hell for it but i didn't fully look at the whole scope of how bad it would look so we did get into an argument over it and it didn't go well so i want to say that that first argument happened off camera now i got a lot of heat for uh coming off really cold during the argument that we had had and stuff on camera well Why? that was because this was the second time we had to do this it was already discussed we had already had a big blow up over this you know film crews and everything get there and they're like hey for continuity purposes you got to do this again i wasn't thrilled about it it was not a good situation to begin with and yeah there was just some stuff that i did not want to talk about on camera because i didn't have poor intent behind it very poor execution, extremely poor execution. And I did, not, I did not take her feelings into account 
while I did this, but I didn't do it for the wrong reason. I, I did it to try to move past things. And obviously that was not the right move. I, I fully understand that at this point, but wasn't going with Sarah still. So the whole blow up happens, you know, as seen on camera. And it's a day or two and the, the production team finally comes back to us and is like, hey, you guys have got to go to a dinner. We've got to talk about this stuff, like see what's going to happen. Okay, great. So we do go to a dinner, which none of this is filmed or it is filmed. None of this is shown, but we go to a dinner. She lays into me again. I totally get that. I, I was there for it. That's fine. Um, I tell her I'm sorry there. I tell her that we'll work through things. Did I come across great? Probably not. I was still frustrated about the whole thing but it, it is what it is that's kind of where the next thing comes up of like where she starts saying you know you should be trying to send me flowers you should be trying to do this and that and i'm like okay cool i'll do that so the very next day i do try to send her flowers and i just get mocked in return over text messages so i'm doing what i'm asked but i don't it's not working so i don't know what to do Things continue to not go well from there. And now at that point, we're not really speaking with each other at all. It's been three or four days. We're leading into the lake day and uh, tensions are high. None of it's gone well. It, it was just a mess. It was just a mess at that point. And what I should have done at that point, and I openly acknowledge this, that again, this was a year ago. I had a lot of time to think about this. I should have just walked from the show at that point and moved on and not done anything else. In that specific situation, I didn't know what to do at that point. So I'm staying in a townhouse that's, you know, that we're supposed to be filming in, all this other stuff. Um, you know, I said I packed her bags. She had one suitcase that was sitting in the closet that was never unpacked. I zipped it up, put them at the bottom of the stairs, and I brought her chair downstairs. I didn't just like pack her stuff up and, and kick her out of the place. I was trying to figure out how I'm leaving as well. So now we lead into the late day. Frustrations are extremely high. First of all, do you notice how his face doesn't move? It's just blank. Um, and also he's like, oh, I packed up her stuff. It was only one suitcase. I was trying to figure out how I was going to leave. That's the point. It wasn't your place to be kicking her out of and packing her things out of. Why don't you just worry about yourself, pack your own bags and get out of there. Like it just shows how callous this guy is. He doesn't even, that doesn't register her, to him how inappropriate it was for him to back up her bags in a place that he doesn't even own or rent or whatever. It's not his place to be doing that, literally. I <clears throat> We are kind of being brought in in like kind of like a scattered way. Not everybody all shows up all at the same time. And the, the tensions are just extremely high at this point. Everybody's uncomfortable. And, you know, Laura and I are asked to go and have a conversation. Clearly that conversation does not go well because neither of us are on speaking terms at this point. And we'd already been broken up. Again, we had to do it again on camera because for continuity purposes, it, it just had to be that way, I guess. Um, but we were already broken up. That wasn't when we broke up. So it wasn't playing well. Um, Sarah and I have our conversation and yeah, I should not have done the jet ski thing. That was a little bit of alcohol. That was a lot of frustration and a very poor judgment call at that point. So again, I get that was not the right move. So for the last time, I want to be very clear that things were not handled correctly. I don't regret the final outcome. I do acknowledge how Laura felt or maybe did maybe felt throughout this. I don't know exactly how she felt because I'm not her. But I do acknowledge that um, I don't regret the final decision of being with Sarah. Um, I think all of that should have been away from the camera, should have been away from the show. And after all of that was done and wrapped up and after I had left, I, I do believe that. Um, but again, this is a year ago. Been a lot more time to think about this. Had a lot more time to, to process all of the things that were and were not right. Um, Hey, hey. I, I don't know what else to say about it. It, it, it is what it is. And unfortunately it, it happened. And the reason I'm talking about all of this on Instagram and not with media outlets or anything like that is I'm not going to be doing media. I don't want to talk to any media people about this. I'm not. He's putting it on Instagram and not speaking to media because media will ask questions and poke holes in his story and his BS. Not trying to 
get any spotlight out of this. I, I am not trying to be an influencer. I don't want to be an influencer. This is not for me. I, I it's just not my realm. Don't like to do it. I like stuff outside of this. Um, nothing against anybody who wants to do that. That's fine. This is, this is just not my wheelhouse, but people can believe what, what they want to believe, not in things that they don't want to believe, but I, I, I did go there for the right reasons. I did go there to try and meet somebody. And obviously it was a hell of a ride to get to where I'm sitting right now, but I hope this provides a little bit more clarity and, you know, it, it sucks how it all wrapped up, but it is what it is now. And then of course he posts support for another trash man. Um, I can't. I can't. Jeremy in a nutshell, everybody. I can't even respond to this stuff because like I told you at the beginning of it, this man is a proven liar. We've seen him lie several times on the show. So to me, it's just, it, there's no point in even pointing out all of his lies and inconsistencies at this point. We just, to me, I write him off. You know, if his lips are moving, he's freaking lying. But I wanted to share that with you nonetheless. Let me know how you feel about Jeremy defending Trifling Trevor. And now it seems like he's defending another psycho. Matt, I'm sorry to the ladies of Love is Blind season six. The, the pickings were hella slim. There, were, there weren't really any good options. There's Johnny, but even Johnny's a little bit on the ignorant side in regards to the birth control thing especially but i digress guys let me know what you think about all this mess in the comment section down below and as usual we'll chat don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already that's all for now thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye now